Hello, and welcome to a digital lecture for Salt Lake Community College. This lecture will cover section 1.2 for Intro to Statistics, Data Basics. We have more than a handful of definitions here that will allow us to designate data in various different types of gathered data. First, though, we define what we call an observational unit as a single person or object being studied, someone or something that can give us different data values. Oftentimes, you will see observational units also defined as an individual in the study, though we sometimes refrain from using that terminology as we do not want to give the implication that we are always studying living beings, as an individual tends to imply. The data we gather from observational units are referred to as variables, called as such because the data varies from individual to individual, or from observational unit to observational unit. One observational unit's hair color or gas mileage can vary when compared to another's, and if we so please, we can organize that data into a tabular structure called a data set, where the rows are the observational units and the columns are the variables. The variables themsel themselves, though, like hair color and gas mileage that I just mentioned, are further divided into variable designations the first of which being a quantitative variable. A quantitative variable is one that can take on a numerical value, quantities, where it is sensible to add, subtract, or take averages of those values. Generally, if a value can be described by a number, then it is oftentimes quantitative. But the last part of the sentence will help us to identify variables that look numeric, but aren't actually quantitative. If they are quantitative, then we split that even further into either being discrete or continuous. Discrete data can take on only certain numerical values with spaces between numbers. We say that you can count the options logically, whereas continuous data can take on infinitely many possible numerical values. It can be measured or not counted. An example of discrete data would be money as we can count all the different possible numeric values. For example, maybe something costs one cent versus something that costs two cents. However, we cannot have anything that costs anything in between those two. Conversely, a length of time would be something that is considered to be continuous, as we can have a sound that measures one second or two seconds, but we can also have anything measured in between one or two seconds, logically. You will see some more examples of these very shortly. If we aren't working with quantitative data, then we have categorical data, where the variable's responses are categories. It is sometimes also known as qualitative data. An example of this would be the type of tree in a yard such as a spruce tree or an oak tree. These are not numeric values and they do not act as such, so they are considered categorical. They describe the tree, but they do not count anything. We call the different possibilities therein categories, or sometimes levels. Now let's look at some examples of the differences between quantitative and categorical, and discrete versus continuous. For our first example, it's going to ask us to classify the variables either categorical or quantitative, which I will do with a C for categorical and a Q for quantitative. First of all, gender. In order to identify whether something is going to be considered categorical or quantitative, we want to think about the different options that we could have for this. For example, an individual's gender we could consider as male, female, non-binary, and so on and so forth. The different options that we are coming up with here are not numerical in nature. They are ways of describing the individual. Therefore, we are going to consider gender as a categorical variable. It is not numeric in nature. Conversely, for temperature, we would describe something to be a temperature of maybe 78 degrees Fahrenheit, or maybe 22 degrees Celsius, or maybe 170 Kelvin, using various different temperatures 
types. Regardless, it is still a number that we use when talking about temperature. Therefore, we're going to consider it to be quantitative. Furthermore, we can add and subtract these values and come up with a logical number. For example, if I add two Fahrenheit values together, then I get a higher temperature, which seems to be logical. If I look at the next one, nation of origin, I'm going to consider that to be categorical because I could have a nation be USA, France, etc. These are categories compared to number of siblings, which I could have zero siblings, one sibling, two siblings, etc. These are numerical in nature, and if I add them together, I just get more siblings. Same for number of day days worked, could also be zero, one, two, etc. So it also be quantitative in nature. And the same also goes for grams of carbohydrates in a donut. Could have 240 grams or 1,072 grams. They're numerical in nature, and adding them together just gives you more grams. The last two, though, are a little bit tricky. When you look at a phone number, a phone number does not act like a normal number. Specifically, if I were to add two phone numbers together, it does not make sense to then get a higher phone number. If I maybe take two, two phone numbers, such as 0123456, if I take that phone number, and I also take 9876, Five, four, three. I add these two together. I don't get a higher phone number that has a higher value. It's just a different phone number. And sometimes it doesn't even make sense. Sometimes we'll get something that doesn't even track as an actual phone number. Therefore, even though they look numeric in nature, they are more describing something. We're going to consider these categorical. You can also think about the area code on a phone number, the first three digits, describing where that individual is located or where they got their phone. Same also goes for zip code. An individual's zip code just describes where in the United States they are located. So for example, 12857 and 44320. If these are true zip codes, all they are doing is describing where a person is located. Adding two zip codes or two locations doesn't make sense. You would not add Europe and Africa together and get a, a bigger location. Doesn't really make sense. So we have a couple situations of things that look numeric but are categorical in nature. Another example, looking at discrete versus continuous. We have how many times a head is face up after flipping a coin five times. Again, we look at the possibilities to determine if something is going to be discrete, D, or continuous, C. A coin that's being flipped, you could have zero heads after five flips. One, two, three, four, or all five. Note that I can't have anything in between any of those numbers. If I can, then it likely is continuous. But since I cannot, I can logically count up all the values by proceeding in a fashion like so. I'm going to consider this to be discrete. Same also goes for shoe size. Typically, when you look at shoe sizes, you would see size, maybe for men's, you'd see a size of 10. Sometimes you also see 10.5 and 11 and 11.5. Shoe sizes tend to be with decimals. So we can technically have a value between 10 and 11. However, it does not delineate any further from there. We cannot have anything between 10 or 10 and a half. It's not a typical shoe size. Therefore, because I could still list out all the possibilities in this kind of fashion, I'm going to consider this to be discrete. 
If we look at those compared to number three, distance Tiger Woods can drive a golf ball. Tiger Woods would drive a golf ball some amount of meters. Maybe 820 meters. Maybe 821 meters. However, we can also have any value in between that. Distance is something that we measure. We can have any value in between any two. We just have a more precise value. Since we can logically have any number between any two that we come up with, we're going to consider this to be a continuous data set. Points scored in a basketball game is going to be considered discrete. You can count them up just like I would for counting up a coin. I could have the same possible values. 0 points, 1 point, 2 points, 3 points, etc. Volume of water is going to act similar to distance. Tiger Woods can drive a golf ball. That will be continuous. Because we could have maybe 4 liters or 5 liters, but we could have anything in between. Still logical, you can measure volume. Length of a song, I talked about earlier. Length of a song or amount of time should be continuous by nature. You could have anything between any two particular values. Number of words in a song would thus be discrete because we can count how many words we can have. We can't have a decimal amount of words or anything in between any whole numbers. And lastly, advertise price of a pound of apples. Again, I had already talked about money earlier. Money is a good example of discrete data because even though we can have decimals, for example, maybe something costs $2.42 or maybe it costs $2.43, we don't have anything in between those two. So there's a limit to how precise we can get. Therefore, we're going to call those discrete values. That's about it for 1.2. If you have any further questions, be sure to review the example videos or ask your instructor.